I recently got the TestLogic mobile display device to review. This device plugs into the OBD2 port and allows you to monitor and display on your phone pretty much everything you could want to see about the car. It has an adapter that fits directly in front of the steering wheel, giving you all of the information right in your direct line of sight. It doesn't even block the air vents if you split them to each side like this. The adapter holds your phone in place and charges it utilizing one of the rear USB ports. The charging part of the adapter costs extra, but it tucks away neatly and is definitely worth it. I never got accustomed to having the information on the screen in the center of the car. I understand why it makes the interior more simplistic, but I still wanted a center steering wheel screen. The test logic display is ideal for that. I have the largest iPhone 14 Pro Max phone and it fits perfectly behind the steering wheel. I can easily see the entire display from my normal sitting position. There are four screens you can cycle through in the app. Those screens display navigation, speed, power, and acceleration data. The test logic display even works simultaneously with the Sexy Buttons app. They plug into different OBD2 ports so you can run them simultaneously, which is ideal. I prefer the test logic display to the Sexy Buttons app, but I still need the Sexy Buttons for things like auto opening my doors for me and opening the front from the door handle. The main dashboard screen shows you car speed, power, and efficiency data. It is really well laid out and gives you all the general information you need at a glance. They recently added a setting to the Nerds setting screen that allows you to put a correction factor on your vehicle speed. If you use non-standard tire diameters, then it will throw your car's speedometer off. With this new setting, I can correct the speed displayed so that it is always accurate. If your car's speedometer is off, then this allows you to always see the correct value right in front of you. The energy screen gives you specific information on exactly where the power coming out of the battery is being utilized at any given moment. This is really handy if you want to check for where phantom drain is coming from. You can also see how much power is being utilized when heating or cooling the battery. I've seen as much as 9 kilowatts from preconditioning alone in the car. Monitoring this power screen can really help you understand why your efficiency is going up or down. I was able to get the power draw down to 0.32 kilowatts by turning everything off while sitting in park. I don't think it will go any lower than that. Let me know what you did if you can get it to go lower than that value. I was able to drive 208 miles with an average efficiency of 218 watt hours per mile at an average speed of almost 63 miles per hour by using the test logic display and some hypermiling techniques. That would be almost 360 miles of range on a full charge in my 2022 Tesla Model 3 performance. Being able to see all of the power data really helps me optimize my efficiency, especially when hypermiling. The acceleration screen works, but this is no substitute for a dedicated GPS device that measures acceleration like a Draggy or a V-Box. I tested the test logic acceleration measurements at the drag strip and then compared the results to my Draggy results and the track time slips. For 0 to 60 miles per hour, the test logic was reasonably close, but it was way off for the quarter mile times. It is fine to use this screen for fun, but you really have to understand that it can be off by almost a full second in the quarter mile times. This is not an accurate way to measure acceleration. I saw a maximum of 598 horsepower on the acceleration screen. This value is indicating what the power coming out of the battery is. That is before the motors and the single speed transmission. There are some losses there, so this value is much higher than what the actual wheel horsepower would be. I estimate that when the TestLogic app shows 598 horsepower at the battery, that is probably 525 horsepower at the wheel. That is about a 12% loss from the battery to the wheels, which is completely plausible. My car is older and has some degradation, so it might be possible to get above 600 horsepower to show if you have a new car and test it with the TestLogic device. I really like that I can scroll through the screen simply by pressing the car's right scroll wheel, left or right, that is really handy for switching screens while driving. If you want to reset the trip computer part, you can just press on the words current trip for a moment and it will reset. One of the best features is the ability to collect full log files for each of my acceleration runs. You have to enable CSV logs in the nerd screen, but then you can start and stop capturing logs by pressing the C with the red circle around it in the main driving screen. Hopefully they will add this logging button to the acceleration screens too because that is where I typically need it most. The logging gives you all kinds of battery temperature, speed, and horsepower data. However, there are a few fields I couldn't find in the logs. I get motor temperatures and individual torque figures from my other devices. 
Hopefully they will add that data to the logs and the acceleration screens in a future update.